Welcome in everyone to the Larson Land Podcast. I'm your host, Sawyer Hill. And as always, I'm joined by my co-host, Dylan Bradshaw. We come on here every single Wednesday and talk about all things involving the 2021 NASCAR Cup Series champion, Young Money, Kyle Larson. Dylan, we made it. It's our 20th episode. I can't believe we made it this far on the podcast. Uh, did you think we would ever make it this far? Yeah, honestly, uh, I thought it would be kind of kind of done after a few episodes. It get kind of boring, but you know, everyone's been uh, you know supporting us on the page and everything. So, just kind of uh, encouraging for us to keep going on, and yeah, it's been been pretty fun so far. Yeah, it's definitely been a very good experience, you know, doing the podcast and everything. We've seen a lot of support on YouTube. Um, you know, we're, we're just over 400 subscribers now. So um, if you're listening to this, shameless plug, go ahead and click that subscribe button. Um, it helps us out a lot. So, uh, you know, let's let's hop right into to all the news today. We have a lot of stuff to cover, Dylan. Um, obviously, all the sprint car stuff from Eldora and Attica. The week kind of started off last week on Tuesday night with, with Kyle Larson picking up his second win of the season at Attica. Um, awesome battle there with Donnie Schatz. Yeah, that was a great race. He was looking pretty fast early on. And, uh, yeah, just, just an insane battle of shots. It was real clean racing. Um, Kyle, Kyle was, you know, getting a decently commanding lead there, but then lap traffic obviously, uh, came up and Shatz just came out of nowhere. But yeah, like I said, really clean racing. It was, a uh, really exciting to see and glad Kyle could, uh, pick up that win. Yeah. And honestly, for me, I mean, that was, I mean, obviously I'm biased with, uh, Kyle winning that race, but I think it was one of the best of the, of the week. You know, that battle with, with Donnie Shots, we didn't see a battle that was, was, that good um the rest of the week in my opinion but you know like like donnie said in the interview after you know he's a clean racer and kyle kyle you know kind of said that as well that you know donnie's one of those guys that he's gonna race clean no matter what and uh that's what we saw on tuesday night but um kind of moving on to the rest of the week big week of racing at eldora um over two hundred seventy five thousand dollars in winnings uh on the table and uh, Kyle started off the week with the Joker's Wild on Wednesday. Um, finished 11th after kind of kind of struggling early on in, in time trials, and kind of got behind the eight ball. He started 15th in that feature, finished 11th, and then on Thursday night it was the return of the historical big one, um, hundred thousand dollars to win, and it looked like Kyle was setting himself up for such a good one there, Dylan. Yeah, a bit of a heartbreaker there at the historical big one. You know, he was he was really quick. He was running second. He started third, but you know, unfortunately, we saw him suffer that flat right rear, and he he still put up a pretty impressive run. You know, he finished ninth, but you know, just just hard to make a uh, make your way back through the field after you know starting in the tail. But Brent Marks picked up that win. Not too surprising there. Hottest sprint car driver in the country. So uh, congrats to him. He he made a ton of ground to get that win. Um, really deserved it, but. Yeah, just just heartbreaker there at the at the HBO. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I thought early on in that race before Kyle's tire went down, it looked like it was going to be a battle of the two Kings Royal champions from from twenty twenty one. You know, Tyler Courtney up front leading the early stages of the race, Kyle Larson tracking him down, and obviously Kyle with some some misfortune there early on in that one. But uh, definitely was 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 another good race there that uh, for the historical big one. I mean, Tyler Courtney was up there battling, like I said, Rico Abreu really kind of came on late in the race at towards the middle to end stages of the race and. Looked like he might be the guy that emerged and, and went to win the race, but him and Courtney were throwing sliders back and forth, and Brent Marks made his charge from, I think, 13th or 14th starting position, and uh, once he caught those two guys and got by them, it, it seemed like that was pretty much all she rode, and Brent Marks rode off into the sunset for his first win of the weekend, I will say, and, uh, you know, when we got to the King's Royal on Saturday night, it was uh, the same old song and dance. Brent Marks picked up the hundred and seventy-five thousand dollar win. Um, Kyle Larson started on the pole of his heat race on Saturday night, but ended up finishing second, and that was kind of uh, kind of kind of started him off on the bad foot for the the A main, where you know if he finished if he picked up that win, he would have started third and. Um, finishing second in the heat put him starting 10th and it was really hard to pass on saturday night yeah it was pretty slow in hot laps and qualifying but you know like you said we got we got kind of lucky with that invert let him start first but you know shoehart was just really quick in that heat and he took the win but 
yeah, it just sucks that Larson could get that win. He would start third instead of tenth, but um, you know, unfortunately, it wasn't enough. And also note the the night before the Kings Royal was rained out. You know, Kyle wasn't looking too fast to start, but it was postponed to the next day. And uh, Kyle obviously didn't run that. He had a uh, cup practice and qualifying in New Hampshire, but yeah, just uh, just tough for the Kings Royal. But Brent Marks, you know. Once again, picks up the win. Like I said, hottest sprint car driver in the country. Can't really stop him right now. Yeah, and I mean, uh, $275,000 total in winnings for Brent Marks um, throughout the week. And, you know, we talked about it before. I bought that T-shirt a couple weeks ago back on uh, the first night of PA Sprint Week for Kyle there at Lincoln. And that kind of started Brent Marks' tear that he's, he's gone on here. And, I mean, honestly, I feel like at this point I deserve a percentage of the earnings that he has, he has uh, accrued over the past couple weeks. And, you know, that T-shirt really set him on this this tear. Yeah, I definitely think the T-shirt stems from this uh, streak he's on. I always uh, I always say something in the group chat with our friend Austin. Uh, I, I always blame all of his wins on you, especially when uh, it, it has to do with Kyle and him battling for the lead. So, yeah, I'm gonna continue to blame that on you uh, for the for the future races that you know Brett Marks wins until you know maybe you trash it or burn it of some sort. But yeah, not not too happy about that one. Maybe I just need to buy more Larson shirts. I mean, I already have 300 Kyle Larson shirts, but maybe I need to buy one more, and that'll uh, change Kyle's luck. And maybe um, maybe maybe you're right. Maybe I do need to get rid of the Brett Marks shirt. But um. <laughs> Moving on from the sprint car stuff earlier in the week, New Hampshire, um, another disappointing Cup Series race for Kyle. I mean, I think everybody can agree we can't wait to have Cliff Daniels back next week at Pocono. And, uh, man, it just looked like it was going to be a good race for Kyle all day. It seemed like he had a top five car and uh, maybe not the fastest. I mean, honestly, I thought that Truex looked like he kind of was the fastest guy all day. I mean, obviously, he started on the pole, but... You know, it just seemed like throughout the day, Kyle's car just got worse and worse, and uh, it didn't seem like his team was able to make the adjustments on the car that needed to put him um, up there with the leaders, whereas, you know, look on the flip side of things with Chase Elliott's team, you know, obviously another Hendrick car, and his team kind of made adjustments throughout the day to put him in contention for the win, and obviously he ended up finishing second to uh, Christopher Bell becoming the 14th different winner this season. But, you know, it's kind of kind of the tale of tale of two teams there with, with Kyle and uh, Chase. Yeah, we talked about it early on. I mean, the race looked like it was off to a, to a pretty decent start. I mean, I think the track looked pretty decent early on. You know, the cars were able to run a little bit, a uh, little bit different lines than what we've seen in previous years. But, yeah, I mean, I think it, I think it kind of comes down to Kyle with that, with that one pit where we didn't take tires. We only took fuel kind of I, I don't really understand that one you know everyone's taking tires and i guess they were just hoping for a caution or something not really sure on uh on that strategy but yeah excited for cliff to come back as you would say from his uh bahamas vacation so <laughs> looking forward to uh seeing him back at pocono pocono is a pretty good track for kyle you know uh last year's race at pocono was pretty interesting we had a a nascar double header with a race on saturday and sunday and you know, I hope I hope uh, Pocono's race this week doesn't end like the, you know, heartbreaker as it did last year as a uh, Larson blew a tire on the final turn. But um, yeah, it just seems like how this year's going. Um, it seems like some type of issue or you know pit strategy, something's kind of inevitable um, for Kyle. You know, just just kind of terrible luck. Uh, all these races we're seeing. Yeah, and I and one thing you touched on there was was the double header this weekend at Pocono or that last year at Pocono. Um, kind of kind of thought that was a really cool thing last year having that that double header. And really, I wish that's something. Uh, in my opinion, I think that's something that NASCAR should should do more in the future. I mean, we saw it a couple times with with uh like during COVID and everything. NASCAR did a couple double headers. I think there was one that was at Darlington right like when nascar came back from covid and um some definitely something i think is like is very interesting it's it's different than what we see the rest of the season like last year at pocono obviously heartbreaker for kyle in the first race but you know you have a bad race the first day you're able to come right back the second day and and kind of kind of play play your play your hand a little bit differently yeah the second day he, he got a second place finish so not a bad day at all um 
like I said, he's been pretty good at poking out. He's put together a, a fair amount of good performances throughout his career. He has eight top tens in his 14 starts there. So, you know, look, heading into the weekend, it's it's a pretty good track for Kyle. So hoping for the best, especially, like we said, with Cliff coming back. So that should uh, that should be a big uh, bounce back for the five team. For sure. And, I mean, it's I think Kevin has done a, a good job filling in for Cliff. But, you know, like, like I've said the past couple of weeks, it just seems like Cliff is able to kind of take make strides on the car through, over, throughout the race. I mean, we saw it this week, I think, more so than the past three weeks. But it just seemed like, you know, Kyle really just he needed some adjustments on the car and he needed to uh he needed so he needed a different set of eyes on something and Kyle was kind of getting frustrated at the end of the race and you know no wonder he's on older tires than everybody else and um just really struggling there but I think I think Cliff could have could have honestly put this this team in contention and, and I think sometimes it's 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 easy to be the guy that oh, we're going to do something completely different than everybody else. We're going to go on this crazy strategy that's going to, you know, put us out front. And I think sometimes it's more can be said about the guy that just goes with the normal strategy and takes small, um, you know, small adjustments and, and kind of just works their way through the uh, throughout the day. Yeah, Kyle and Cliff have a, another thing is they have a lot of chemistry. You know, they're they're pretty good friends, so... You know, obviously, we we saw that chemistry work out last year, and then in that incredible season, and you know that's a big thing. I mean, Cliff he he talks him through through the races. He asks if he needs anything, his adjustments he needs. He he just very, you know, he he's very urgent on what Kyle needs and everything. And uh, yeah, I mean that that definitely plays a part um, in these uh, in these races. All right, so kind of. Jump into some other big news that broke this past week. Uh, actually, two big stories. The first one, Kyle Larson, you know, coming out and saying uh, in the Racing America article that he is not going to be competing in the 2023 Chili Bowl um, if the purse doesn't increase for this upcoming year. And uh, kind of came as a surprise to me, Dylan. But what were your initial thoughts when you read the article? Yeah, I was definitely surprised. He's been running the Chili Bowl pretty much as uh, most of his career, his racing career, so pretty surprising. But, I mean, I'd, I'd have to agree with him. You know, there's a lot of controversy there, but I'd have to agree with him. You know, 10K purse in one of the biggest events in dirt racing. I mean, it's a crown jewel event. It's a huge event, and they're only paying out 10K, and they're bringing in, I mean, what, millions? So it's just, it's not really fair for these drivers. And I saw an article that... I mean, it almost costs more to race than what you're getting and winning. So, you know, Kyle's looking out for these drivers that, you know, smaller guys, smaller teams don't have, you know, the budget to race all these events. And he's trying to look out for them and uh, getting a bigger payday. Yeah, and I mean, especially when you're talking about over 300 cars being there this past year um, entering into the race. And it kind of being a, it's, I mean, a lot of teams make, I mean, really for most people, it's a haul to get out to the Tulsa. I mean, it's, you know, really central in, in the United States. And it's, you know, you got the teams from California that are coming a long way. And you got the, the East Coast guys that are coming a long way as well. I mean, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of midget racing there in, in Tulsa or like in the Oklahoma area as well. But, I mean, it, it does, I mean, for those guys to be out there for almost a whole week and race, it's a lot of money. And, uh, you know, I think Brad Sweet was one guy that kind of, talked about it in the in the article um uh, like the racing america article that's saying that you know it's he puts a good amount of money you know f- over five six seven thousand dollars to get there and and just run the one race and it's only ten thousand dollars to win so i mean really doesn't make a lot of sense it's kind of been the prestige of the event that's that's carried it over the years but kyle's right i mean they need to step up the the purse, and there's there's big races every week that are paying a lot more money than ten thousand dollars to win. Even midget races that are paying a lot more than ten thousand dollars to win. Um, so definitely, I expect some changes to to take place with this event over the next couple of years. Maybe it's not this year. Maybe maybe this year the Chili Bowl sees a drop in entries. Maybe Kyle kind of starts the trend here, and I know you know other drivers like Christopher Bell and like I said Brad Sweet kind of talked about how you know, they agree about what Kyle said. And um, it's going to be interesting to see how this unfolds over the next couple of years. I don't think it's going to be something that, that happens 
uh, overnight change, but it's gonna it's gonna have some some long lasting impacts. This this decision from Kyle. Yeah, and I don't think it's like what people were you know that that were disagreeing with him, where you know Kyle's losing his passion for racing, so on and so on. I mean, Kyle's Kyle's kind of the spokesperson for for you know all these guys. You know, he's a NASCAR champion. He runs all these dirt races. He's kind of just he's he's the guy that if something needs to be said then he's the guy to say it. I don't think it's, you know, losing patch for racing. He's just sticking up for everyone, like I said. And uh, the the promoter's response is kind of interesting to, to it. You know, he was saying something along the lines of, you know, I'm setting up the these NASCAR drivers' careers. You know, they're running the Chili Bowl. then going to, you know, run successful NASCAR careers, which is kind of a interesting uh, comeback to that for me. You know, I don't really see a ton of uh, Chili Bowl drivers, you know, making their way into NASCAR from specifically running the Chili Bowl. So I don't don't really understand that one. Yeah, I mean, I think that's just a bunch of crap. And, it, you know, like he goes on to say in the in the article that, you know, Chase Elliott has my number, like he can call me and all this stuff. And it's like, I mean, yeah, Chase Elliott's a big name, but Chase Elliott's also not Kyle Larson. And he's not the guy that's running over a hundred races a year, you know, with sprint cars and late miles and midgets and NASCAR combined. I mean, Chase Elliott has ran a couple dirt races here and there, including the Chili Bowl last year in Kyle's car. But I mean, yeah, promoter just seems a little, little bit salty. And, um, you know, (laughs) maybe, maybe he'll realize that Kyle's bringing in a lot of fans and, uh, it's gonna, gonna hurt him in the next uh, couple of seasons. Yeah, definitely. But uh, on the other hand, we got some uh, some other news this week. The over the week, we got news that Larson will be running a uh, a pavement midget race at Lucas Oil Indianapolis Raceway Park on August first, and uh, that's the day after the Cup Series Indy Road Course race. And it's actually Kyle's first pavement midget race since 2013. So some pretty exciting stuff there. He will be driving a car from car owner Jerome Rodella in the USAC event. So for everyone uh, interested in watching that, you will be able to catch that on flow racing. Yeah, definitely an awesome opportunity for Kyle to kind of get behind the wheel of another different type of car um, there. I think he's actually going to be running a pavement pavement midget and a pavement sprint car that night uh, at IRP. So kind of a cool track for Kyle and a cool little event um, leading into the BC 39 uh, later in the week which, I mean, right now it's not 100% confirmed that Kyle's going to be there, but you kind of got to figure if Kyle's running, you know, Indy Road Course and then, you know, the the Monday night there at IRP, you kind of think Tuesday, or I think it's Wednesday and Thursday, I think he'll definitely be at the BC39. But, um, yeah, just, just a cool opportunity for Kyle to run in the pavement midget and maybe another type of car he can pick up a win in this year. Yeah, definitely exciting to see. And, uh, yeah, as far as his schedule goes, you know, we always get a bunch of questions about his schedule. It's, for the most part, kind of up in the air. Nothing's really confirmed unless it's kind of a, you know, a big race, crown jewel type of event. So we kind of just play that as it goes on. A lot of people were asking, well, the podcast drops on Wednesday, so that would be the time of the race, but asking about Port Royal. And uh, it, he has also some Royal of Outlaws Williams Grove races. So um, nothing confirmed on that yet. We We do have a little... A few little leaks, as we could probably say, from Shop Kyle Larson that, you know, could kind of aim as he would be there, but nothing's really, you know, confirmed as of right now. So just uh, keep an eye out for uh, for those races. Yeah, and like you said, I mean, yeah, we really are, we really don't know about Port Royal and Williams Grove this week. I mean, for me, I, I'm kind of leaning towards no on Port Royal for Wednesday night just because Wednesday night is the ESPYs out in L.A., and... As we all know, Kyle Larson um, nominated for best driver, you know, going against the the likes of Max Verstappen and Alex Pillow for that award. So um, not going to, you know, chalk it up to a Larson uh, taking home that, that award. But, you know, if he does, he's going to obviously have to be there in attendance probably on Wednesday night at the ESPYs. So that's kind of having me lean towards no on Port Royal. But then again, like you said, on that shirt last week, the bingo shirt um, that just came out, um, Kyle Larson or shop Kyle Larson they did have Williams Grove and Port Royal on that shirt um so maybe that maybe that does mean he's going to be at Port Royal and Williams Grove so we we, you know we'll just have to find out and then like you said today new sprint car design um kind of showing like a sneak peek of it on their story on Instagram shop Kyle Larson so not sure what that's about maybe that's a design for this week I guess we'll just kind of have to wait and see 
Yeah, definitely. We 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 don't really have a you know a schedule plug for Larson. It seems like a lot of the time, Shop Car Larson's actually a good indication of where he'll be that week. So, yeah, that's pretty much what we go off of. Too bad we don't have a plug, or you know, yeah. we're really in with Kyle yet. But you know, it's not it's not a bad uh, a bad little plug to have. Yeah, and of course, and I, and I mean, one of the other things is it's like if you guys, if anybody listening, if you guys ever have like a little, you know, hunch about some Kyle Larson schedule stuff, that's honestly our biggest source for for news and stuff is is people kind of telling us everything and getting a feel for where Kyle's going to be. So, you know, obviously, if you think Kyle's going to be somewhere or you know have a question about it, always feel free to ask. We we respond to obviously pretty much everybody if you ever reached out to us we respond um and get back as soon as we can so um yeah uh as far as um the other the other big piece of news the last last big piece of news went for the week um kind of going back to that chili bowl thing you know like you said dylan people saying I saw a lot of people on Facebook saying Kyle Larson's lost his passion for racing and, and, you know, he doesn't care as much not running the Chili Bowl. But if you have any question about that, this next piece of news, Kyle Larson starting the, the high limit sprint car series with his brother-in-law, Brad Sweet. I mean, that's, that shows Kyle's passion for racing, you know, huge, huge money on the line, midweek sprint car races, 12 races, two fifty thousand dollars to win races, and the other 10 paying $23,000 to win. Kyle cares about the rest rest of the, the dirt track, the dirt racing world, and it's not um, any loss of passion for Kyle Larson. Yeah, I actually, uh, actually kind of forgot about the whole high limit thing. I mean, keeping up with all these races, kind of, kind of foggy memory. But yeah, that that's really exciting. You know, Larson and Brad Sweet launching the twelve race uh, midweek sprint car series. Um, there will be an open at Lincoln Park Speedway in Indiana on August sixteenth. So that will be an exciting, you know, little sneak peek to you know what the event could hold. But yeah, I'm I'm curious to see what uh what tracks they will be at next year. You know. In the little trailer, it said the best track. So, you know, the likes of Eldora, you know, maybe Port Royal. So interesting to see what uh, what tracks we will see in the High Limit Series. Yeah, obviously, def- we're definitely excited for that schedule to come out and hopefully some, some local stuff that we can attend, uh, you know, in our areas. Um, but, uh, you know, if you have any... Um, any predictions for the for the high limit schedule for next season? Leave a comment if you're watching this on YouTube. Um, definitely like to kind of get some ideas going and uh, maybe get some hype going too. Because you know, like Kyle said in his interview, if you watched it, um, it's it's available on Flow Racing if you haven't watched it. But you know, Kyle said in his interview that the the twelve races for next year are not confirmed where they're going to be. So if you have somewhere that you want to want to see this series go to at a middle of the week show, kind of like let's get the hype going. Yeah, definitely. Everyone, uh, be sure to comment. We uh we might put a little poll up on the on the Instagram story about you know what potential tracks he could be at, what tracks you guys think, where you want him to come. So it could be a fun little interaction we could have with the followers and. Yeah, that's that should pretty much sum uh, sum it up. Um, we we will, like I said earlier, we will post if he will be at Port Royal or Williams Grove uh, this weekend, this week. Um, just keep an eye out for that. It's, it is up in the air. Like we said, it's not confirmed, so um, only time will tell on that one. Yeah, and uh, if 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 Kyle does end up being at Williams Grove on Saturday, Dylan, I think we're gonna end up you know, going up there. So, you know, we usually wear the Larson land t-shirts when we go out to, to events and stuff. So I know some people in the past have seen us with the shirts on and kind of haven't said anything to us cause they weren't sure, but you know, we're the only two people that have Larson land shirts. So, um, if you see the shirts, don't, don't feel, uh, afraid to, to stop by and say hi. And, uh, um, we we always love chatting with everybody. So, um, I think that's pretty much all we had for today's show. So, uh, thanks everybody for tuning in and listening as always. Um, you know, we'll be back again next week to recap all the, all the racing from Pocono there with the cup series. And, uh, of course, if Kyle participates in anything else, you know, Port Royal or Williams Grove, we'll, we'll talk about that as well. And, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, please don't forget to like, and subscribe. And if you're listening on Apple podcasts, please follow our podcast. So you don't miss a thing. Have a great rest of the week, everyone, and enjoy the on-track action over the next week. We will see you in the next episode.